Welcome to AP Psychology Unit 4, Part 1. In this video, we'll dive into two essential concepts in social psychology, attribution theory and person perception. Attribution theory helps us understand how people interpret and assign causes to behaviors and events. It plays a key role in how we interact with others and comprehend the world around us. Person perception involves forming impressions and making judgments about others. It's a fundamental aspect of our daily social interactions. By understanding these concepts, you'll gain valuable insights into human behavior and mental processes. Whether it's how we explain someone's actions or how we form opinions about others, these theories will help you navigate the complexities of social interactions more effectively. So, let's get started and explore the fascinating world of attribution theory and person perception. Today, we delve into attribution theory, a fascinating aspect of social psychology. Attribution theory examines how we interpret and assign causes to behaviors and events around us. For example, when someone cuts us off in traffic, do we assume they are rude or do we consider they might be late for an emergency? These assumptions are part of attribution theory. By understanding how we make these judgments, we can better navigate social interactions and reduce misunderstandings. So let's dive deeper into how attribution theory shapes our perceptions and behaviors. Person perception involves forming impressions and making judgments about others. Think about the first time you met someone new. Instantly, you began forming an impression based on their appearance, body language, or even the setting in which you met them. These initial judgments help us navigate social interactions. Person perception is more than just a first impression. It also involves interpreting others' behaviors, intentions, and emotions. We use past experiences and social norms to make these judgments. For example, if someone smiles at you, you might assume they are friendly. Person perception influences how we interact with others and respond to social situations. Misjudgments can lead to misunderstandings or conflicts, while accurate perceptions help build better relationships. Understanding person perception gives you the insight to question your initial impressions and consider a wider range of information before making judgments. Understanding why people act the way they do is crucial in social psychology. This brings us to dispositional and situational attributions. Dispositional attributions are about internal factors, a person's character, attitude, or personality. For instance, if someone is late, you might think they're careless. On the other hand, situational attributions look at external factors, circumstances beyond a person's control, like heavy traffic causing the delay. It's important to differentiate between these because it shapes our understanding of people's actions. By recognizing whether behavior is due to internal or external factors, we can better interpret and respond to social interactions. This basic framework of attribution sets the stage for deeper discussions on biases in our thinking. Explanatory styles give us insight into how individuals explain events and behaviors. These are the habitual ways people interpret the causes and implications of what happens around them. For instance, some might attribute their successes to hard work and talent, while others might believe it's all due to luck or external factors. These styles can significantly influence our mental processes, shaping how we perceive and react to the world. Understanding different explanatory styles helps us appreciate the diversity in how people think and respond. It can also reveal patterns linked to optimism or pessimism, affecting one's mental health and overall outlook on life. By exploring these explanatory styles, we can better navigate our own responses and understand others' behaviors more deeply. Let's dive into common biases we face when attributing causes to behaviors. First is the fundamental attribution error, where we tend to overemphasize personal traits and underemphasize situational factors when explaining others' behavior. For instance, if someone cuts you off in traffic, you might think they're rude, rather than considering they might be late for an emergency. Next, the actor-observer bias highlights how we attribute our own actions to external causes, but others' actions to internal factors. For example, if you trip, you might blame the uneven pavement, but if someone else trips, you might think they're clumsy. Finally, the self-serving bias helps us maintain a positive self-view. We credit our successes to internal factors, like hard work, and blame our failures on external factors, like bad luck. 
Understanding these biases can help us be more empathetic and accurate in our social judgments. Locus of control plays a significant role in shaping our behaviors and mental processes. Essentially, locus of control refers to the degree to which individuals believe they have control over the outcomes of events in their lives. When we talk about an internal locus of control, it means a person feels they have the personal power and ability to influence what happens to them. For example, someone with a strong internal locus might attribute their academic success to their hard work and study habits. On the other hand, an external locus of control is where an individual perceives that external factors or forces, like luck, fate, or other people, determine what happens. This means a student might blame a poor test score on the difficulty of the questions, or an unfair teacher, rather than their own preparedness. Understanding your locus of control can provide insights into your motivation, resilience, and overall approach to challenges and opportunities. Developing a balanced perspective on control can lead to better coping strategies and more adaptive behaviors. Have you ever liked a song more after hearing it a few times? Well, that's the mere exposure effect in action. This psychological phenomenon explains how repeated exposure to a stimulus increases our liking for it. Whether it's a song, a person, or even a brand, the more we encounter it, the more we tend to like it. Imagine meeting someone new in your class. At first, they might seem just like anyone else, but after a few weeks of sitting together or working on projects, you start to develop a fondness for them. That's the mere exposure effect, shaping your perceptions and feelings. This effect shows how familiarity can breed preference, playing a crucial role in our everyday interactions and choices. It's fascinating to see how simple repetition can influence our likes and dislikes, often without us even realizing it. So next time you find yourself enjoying something more just because you've seen or heard it several times, remember it's psychology at work, making the familiar feel friendly and favorable. A self-fulfilling prophecy is one of those intriguing phenomena where our expectations can actually shape reality. Imagine you believe you're going to fail a test. Because of this belief, you might feel anxious, miss vital study sessions, or approach the exam with little confidence. Your expectation of failure may contribute to the very outcome you feared. Conversely, if you expect to ace the test, you're likely to study harder, feel more confident, and perform better. These expectations can influence not just academic outcomes, but also social relationships, job performance, and personal goals. Essentially, the beliefs we hold about ourselves and others can significantly impact our behaviors, setting off a chain of events that can make our initial expectations come true. Now, let's explore how this works in various aspects of life. Social comparisons are a fascinating concept in social psychology. Whenever we evaluate ourselves relative to others, we are practicing social comparison. It's a mental process that influences our self-esteem and behavior. For instance, if we notice that a classmate always scores higher on tests, we might feel inadequate. This comparison can drive us to either improve our performance or feel disheartened. On the flip side, comparing ourselves to someone less fortunate can boost our self-esteem. Social comparisons can be both upward and downward, like looking up to someone more accomplished or feeling better when comparing ourselves with someone less privileged. Understanding this helps us manage our feelings of self-worth and motivations. By recognizing the impact of social comparisons, we can better navigate our social environments and foster a healthier self-image. Remember, everyone's journey is unique and comparisons can both inspire and challenge us. So the next time you find yourself comparing, think about how it's influencing you and use it as motivation rather than discouragement. Let's recap what we've learned about attribution theory and person perception. We dove into how we interpret and assign causes to behaviors, exploring both dispositional and situational attributions. We examine person perception and how we form impressions and judgments about others. We also touched on explanatory styles, biases in attribution, and discussed the concept of locus of control and its impact on behavior and mental processes. We explored the mere exposure effect, where repeated exposure increases our liking for a stimulus, and the idea of self-fulfilling prophecies, illustrating how our expectations can shape outcomes. 
Finally, we covered social comparisons, which involve evaluating ourselves in relation to others, impacting our self-esteem and behavior. We hope you found these insights valuable and encourage you to stay tuned for more in-depth explorations into social psychology in our next video. Whether it's about understanding human interactions or learning more about how our minds work, we've got a lot more coming your way.